Hi everyone and welcome to this week's UIF Bulletin. I'm Michael Cardo, the DA Shadow Minister of Employment and Labour. Last week it was announced that the COVID-19 TERS benefit scheme was going to be extended until the 15th of August. Now we hear that discussions are underway at the National Economic Development and Labour Council, that's NEDLAC, about the possibility of extending the benefit until the end of September. However, those discussions are very much in a beginning phase and nothing has been confirmed yet, but we'll be sure to keep you up to date. Whatever the case, the government needs to make a plan for those sectors like tourism and hospitality that can't get back to work until the lockdown has been completely lifted. The UIF needs to play open cards about how much money there is in the pot in order to finance both the TERS benefit and the ordinary UIF benefits. This is because the UIF is going to come under a big cash crunch. We know that the fund set aside 40 billion rand for the months of April, May and June. We also know that the UIF sits on a total portfolio of around about 130 billion rand, half of which lies in government bonds, but it took a bit of a bruising after the Moody's downgrade. Now, about a month ago, I asked the Minister of Employment and Labour whether the UIF's actuaries had done any scenario planning about the fund's long-term financial sustainability. And he came back to tell me that the UIF had worked on four scenarios. In the first scenario, the unemployment rate hits 41% and the TUR scheme costs 48 billion rand. In the second scenario, the unemployment rate also peaks at 41%, but TERS costs 68 billion rand. In the third scenario, the unemployment rate peaks at around 54%, TERS costs 48 billion rand. And in the fourth scenario, the unemployment rate peaks at 54% and TERS costs 68 billion rand. Now, the interesting thing is in the first two scenarios, the UIF comes under huge financial pressure, but it can still manage to pay out all claims. In the third scenario, things start getting a bit ropier and the UIF has to adopt measures much like the Road Accident Fund around prioritizing and structuring payments. In the fourth scenario, it's all fall down stuff and the UIF struggles to honor its obligations. Now, we know that three million people lost their jobs between February and April. National Treasury has predicted that another seven million people might lose their jobs in total because of the lockdown and COVID-19 and its consequences. That would bring the total number of unemployed people in South Africa to 17 million. Currently, we're sitting on an unemployment rate of 30%. It's very quickly going to run up to 40% and in time, it could well reach 50%. So to cut a long story short, the UIF is going to come under huge pressure from a great number of people who are going to start submitting ordinary retrenchment benefits and it needs to tell us exactly how it is going to address the situation. Over to Michael Bagram for further news. Thank you, Mike. It's Michael Bagram. I'm the Labour spokesperson for the Democratic Alliance and thank you for once again for listening to this. I spent the better part of this morning at the Commission for Conciliation, Mediation and Arbitration and to fit in with what Michael Cardo has had to say, the queues outside the CCMA in Cape Town are almost a kilometre long. It is unbelievable. When speaking to the people in the queue, they tell me they've all been retrenched. So people are starting to challenge their retrenchments at the CCMA, but each and every single one of them has put in a claim for their UIF benefits. This is not the TERS, this is the ordinary UIF benefits. And we expect that that's gonna put enormous pressure on the fund and in line with what Michael Cardo has to say, we don't know if they're gonna have the funding for that. So there are literally thousands and thousands of extra people joining the queue for their UIF at this very moment. I suspect myself that we're gonna see over 50% and I think that scenario planning by the Minister of Employment and Labour is going to be absolutely out of kilter completely. So now when we're seeing these massive claims coming in, we are now seeing how incompetent the actual fund is. The incompetence is absolutely enormous. I had a call this morning from a lady who has two infant children I cannot put a loaf of bread on the table at all. She has not received any money from April. And we've called on the minister himself to try and answer for this. 
and I've had no, no answer whatsoever. My real problem with this is, this is more than a disaster that we're facing. We know that the people are losing jobs, we know that the people are starving, and yet we don't get answers from the UIF on this. Yes, when I speak to the Commissioner, I have success for one out of every three of the claims that I put in. One out of three. And I'm a small person. I'm a person that is writing approximately 300 mails a week, to 300 mails a day to the Commissioner. And this is the problem that we're experiencing. This, the UIF somehow cannot plan at all. And the UIF has now advising people to rather retrench people than to pay for the shortfalls. So they're asking the companies out there to push for retrenchment. Now that's madness. In a country where we have the largest unemployment in the world, our UIF people are telling the people of South Africa, go ahead, retrench. Put them in the unemployment queue. It's better for us. We can handle that far easier. I, I think it's an absolute madness. The Democratic Alliance is going to push everything that we have to ensure that we keep more people in their jobs and also to ensure that the UIF has to answer to the people, the workers of South Africa. We in the Democratic Alliance stand behind the workers of South Africa and we want to see results. So thank you very much for listening to me. It's Michael Bagram.